The new executive director of the college football playoff is Rich Clark. Rich had a 38-year distinguished career in the Air Force, most recently serving as the superintendent of the Air Force Academy before moving into his role as the executive director of the CFP. He was also a standout defensive lineman for the Air Force Falcons in the 80s, and we're delighted to be joined by Rich Clark right now. And Rich, as I look back at your career in the 80s and our new college football playoff format, it looks to me like that at worst, you guys, if you'd had that format, then would have had a home playoff game. Might have come up short of the bye, but you had a home playoff game back then, right? I think you're right. We, we, were, we ended up ranked number eight. So uh, I think we would have had a chance to have an on-campus game potentially here at the Air Force Academy. And uh, that would have been the biggest game in our history, I think. So uh, I'd like to think that, but it's been 40 years, so it's hard <laughs> to prove. But uh, it looks that way. There's going to be a ton of excitement with those home playoff games and the other ones down the line with this new 12-team playoff. Um, as you look at this and with the topsy-turvy nature of this, number of teams have been ranked number one, all kinds of upsets, unprecedented number of upsets in one weekend earlier this year among the top 11. How will this committee and how will you uh, define and, and execute best versus most deserving in making these evaluations? Yeah, Reese, that, that's going to be a tough one. I think the committee is going to have their hands full uh, with uh, the selections these, this year. Um, when we talk about best, most deserving, though, I think what we have to realize is that uh, sometimes most deserving is equated to your record. You know, how many wins and losses do you have? I think best is about the entire body of work, though. It does include your record, but it also includes other things like strength of schedule, head-to-head -head competitions, common opponents, and how did you perform against them? And, and just sort of the eye test of those commissioners to really look at those teams and evaluate who's the best, because that's their job. Get the 25 best teams in rank order and then seed them into the playoffs. So with the way that this season has gone, though, it's going to be a, a tough job for them, but I think they're up to the task. I, I hope people really underscored what you said about most deserving. Deserving, I think sometimes we look at this as being mutually exclusive. What you do to deserve it is a component of evaluating whether you're best and it's something that the that the committee tries to execute but within that you talked about strength of schedule uh, common opponents and with the sizes of these conferences rich a lot of times there aren't a ton of common opponents there are teams that are not going to play head to head there are teams within conferences whose schedules are vastly different how will how will the committee approach that in terms of determining strength of schedule and whether they look at non-conference schedules as being uh, part of the mix as well? Well, yeah, and that's a, a, a great question. We have some pretty good statistical data, though, that really goes throughout the season. It looks at all of the opponents of every team and how they perform throughout the season. And then it's able to make a, a very data-heavy uh, determination of, of what the strength of schedule looks like and put them into not just a, a rank order, but really bends those teams that have the, the toughest strength or the best strength of schedule uh, versus the teams that may be on the, on the other end of that. And then the teams that are in the middle. But you, it's hard to compare uh, apples to apples in, in a, uh, the way that our college football uh, layout is for the season. But I think that we have a good data analysis, a, a heavy analytical way to really take a look at that and, and find the right balance of what strength of schedule means to any particular team. Rich, I've hosted this show since the inception of the 14 playoff in 2014, and I know that you guys despise trying to get into hypotheticals. So I want to uh, preface this question by saying I'm not asking you to project what will happen. But in the event, Army and Navy are both undefeated, both with an opportunity to play mm -hmm. in the championship game of the American Conference, then – after Selection Day, they have their regularly scheduled game, which does not count in the conference standings. Explain to us exactly how that would be evaluated, say, if those two teams were to play in the conference championship game and what impact the next game would have, which I, I understand to be none, would have no impact. Is that correct? Well, I, I would say no impact uh, on the college football playoff. Impact on the country 
two storied programs. They're both crushing it this year, uh, both undefeated right now. But like you said, um, if they were to meet in that hypothetical, if they were to meet in the conference champion, that conference champion would then be potentially one of the five conference champions that would go into the bracket. Um, the next week, whatever happens there, we're not going to change the ranking or the seeding for the playoff selection. So um, that game won't count towards the playoff, but it will certainly count towards America, and it'll still be an exciting game. And uh, I, I'm really proud of how those teams are performing. Uh, wish them all the best, but after the conference championship, we'll have made our selection. And certainly both of them can have an impact on Notre Dame as well. Notre Dame looked to have this cruising schedule, and all of a sudden they look up and they've got both undefeated service academies left to play as well starting this weekend when Notre Dame and Navy play. Rich, always a pleasure to be with you, my friend. Best of luck. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, Reese. It's great talking to you, and thank you for having me on today.